riches in the community. This is where we're at. Includes the NAACP. That includes the NAACP. We're in the trenches in the community. This is where we're at. That has included, includes state representative Buck Williams. That includes board full representative Marlo Brown. That includes all of us in the black community. Greetings, everyone. First and foremost, as always, I give honor, praise, and glory to my God, who is represented by my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And I hope and pray that everyone has had a blessed day and a prosperous Juneteenth celebration. Um, before I begin, you know, I was just thinking about Juneteenth and all that it stands for. And when we talk about Galveston, Texas and what happened, um, our ancestors were fighting a war for freedom, justice and equality. And in the midst of their still fighting, the troops came in to tell them the good news that they had been free by President Abraham Lincoln with the famous Emancipation Proclamation. And our ancestors, they stopped fighting. They stopped fighting because they believed the great lie. They believed the lie that these troops came and brought them that they were now free. And who would have believed that after all they had went through, that they could somehow believe that they was free. They believed what Abraham Lincoln said. They believed what the troops said and they stopped fighting. And so we must be very careful of what we believe when we hear it, when we read it, especially when it comes from people other than us. I say all of that to say, believing what you read and what is said to you could be just like our ancestors who believed the lie when the troops rolled in in Galveston, Texas and told them that they were free. And we stopped fighting and we believed the lie. That brings me to my opinion on the, uh, my op-ed opinion on the editorial story that was written in the Republican newspaper. Um, remember what I said to everyone before I went and took this interview with the Republican. I told everyone that I was not naive enough to think that they were calling me in to be a ally to my campaign. I was not naive to believe that the Republican newspaper, who has not been a friend to the black community at all, would somehow be a friend to me. So, today I was told that I was in the newspaper and that I had been quoted in the Republican newspaper on Springfield Municipal Campaigns host parties and state aims for running. What's on page A5 of the Republican newspaper? And it starts off by saying more than 32 Springfield residents are running for spots on the city council. According to a spreadsheet from the city clerk's office, 
sent to the Republican this week. The last day to submit nomination papers was June 6th, and the preliminary election is September the 12th. The first notable person that the Republican mentions is Charles Stokes. Now, I want to be clear that I let them know that my campaign is about black empowerment through economic development and social restructuring to make sure that oversight will be done that the African American community can participate in the economic foundation and structure of our city. So in the course of this hour long interview, here's what the Republican newspaper said. They said Charles Stokes, who said he's collected enough signatures to appear on the ballot for an at-large spot on city council, said in an interview his intention of running was to elevate and support the black community. That is partially true. I said I was running on a black empowerment campaign to make sure that black people in this city would be getting their fair share and equity so that they could be equal and participant citizens in helping to rebuild Springfield. That is what I said. They said he intends to provide job opportunities for black residents, specifically in the field of construction, by ensuring the city's rules regarding contracting with minority-owned businesses are followed. And I, that's partially what I said. I said I intend to do oversight if elected to the city council to make sure ordinances are being fulfilled when it comes to minority contracting and the equitable of African black people working on those job sites. Uh, because let's be clear, Springfield has a uh, build back better Springfield. And I said that I would like for Timothy Sheehan and the rest of them who are on these oversight committees to make sure that the rules and regulations and the ordinance are being followed to the best of their ability, to what the spirit of the ordinance was designed to do. For the spirit, the spirit of that ordinance has not lived up to what it should be when you look up and down State Street, the uh, State Street quarter, when you look at the Worthington Street quarter, the Chestnut Street quarter, um, there are not or hardly any that I have saw of black people working on those job sites. And I tend to do what I would be elected to do is to do oversight, to make sure that the ordinance are being followed, to make sure that the city council knows these things so that we just don't check off and we make sure that all of the requirements are fulfilled. And as we're having this conversation, the, uh, Jonah Snowden asked me a question. He asked me, would I be willing or am I in collaboration with organizations like the NAACP and the Urban League? So the, the article reads, <clears throat> Charles Stokes, who said he's collected enough signatures to appear on the ballot for an at-large spot on the city council, said in an interview his intentions of running was to elevate and support the black community. He intends to provide job opportunities for black residents, specifically in the field of construction, 
by ensuring the city rules regarding contracting with minority owned businesses are followed. And I said to make sure that when those construction contracts are given out by the Fontaine brothers, Palmer con con concrete contractors and all of those white institutions, businesses, that are getting these contracts, that they follow the ordinance and make sure that African Americans are on those job sites. So then a question was asked to me. The question was asked, which community organizations would he work with? Jonah Snowden asked me, would I be working with the Urban League of Springfield and the NAACP? The article says I took a long pause, which I did. I took a long pause. I thought about what Jonah Snowden asked me. And then I repeated to, I said after the pause, I said to Jonah Snowden, April Morrell, Daniel Jackson, and another Caucasian reporter because they had four people in the room doing this editorial review, which they hardly ever do. It was a black man, a black woman, a woman, and two white men. I took a long pause and then I asked this question. I said to Jonah Snowden and everyone in the room, before you sat down with me on this interview, have you heard of anyone talking about a black empowerment campaign that was going to be dealing with contracting and construction work in this city? He answered, no. Then I said to the question he asked me, would I be working with the NAACP and or the Urban League? I said, why would I work with those groups when they have shown no interest in what I'm talking about? I never mentioned the NAACP. I never mentioned the Urban League. They mentioned it. I paused and then I answered with my response. Before I sat down in this room with you to talk about black empowerment for black residents in the city of Springfield, had they ever talked to or heard any candidate talk about a black empowerment campaign. But in this article here, they make it seem like I brought it up. They make it seem because they then go on to say, organization in the city such as the Urban League of Springfield and the NAACP have dropped the ball tremendously. I never said that. I never said that the NAACP or the Urban League dropped the ball tremendously. Now, what I said was, now this whole interview was taped and I asked everybody, before you believe what the Republican says, you ask them to play the whole interview. I said, we as a black community have tremendously dropped the ball. That includes the NAACP, that includes the Urban League, that has include, includes State Representative Bud Williams, that includes Ward 4 Representative Marlo Brown, that includes
includes all of us in the black community. And these facts that I'm stating are evidenced by lack of job opportunities for the black community on these construction sites. This evidence that we as a whole black community have dropped the ball when we have gun violence rapidly going on in our community, when we have opioid addiction running rapidly in our community, as we have allowed our community to fall by the wayside. So although I never said the NAACP or the Urban League by themselves has dropped the ball, I said we all have. Now, let me state clearly, for those of you who know me, for those of you who have been following me, for those of you who have heard me speak on my Facebook Live, if I say something, I stand by what I say. If I have something to articulate about a state representative, about an organization, about a city councilor, even if I state something about myself, I stand by what I say. What I won't tolerate is words being put in my mouth. And I believe that the Republican newspaper put words in my mouth when they said, now you can read the article, it's in today's Republican newspaper, it's on A5 of the newspaper, I am stating clearly that I never said that the NAACP dropped the ball or the Urban League dropped the ball tremendously by themselves. And before anyone goes out and believes the lie, just like our ancestors believed the lie when the troops came into Galveston, Texas and said they were free and they stopped fighting because they believed the lie. If we believe what the Republican says, after we all know in our community that the Republican newspaper has never been a friend of the black community. And it is their job to bring animus between those of us in the black community have opposing views on the black community. So I want that to be clear. I, if they tell you everything I said, if they allow the recording to be played because the interview was taped, they, Jonah Snowden, asked me a question. I paused and answered the question again. I want to be clear. Those organizations that you mentioned, have you ever heard them talking about what I'm talking about now? Black empowerment, through economic development, with jobs and contracts, going to the minority, the, the African community, African American community. They said, no, my response was then, why would I work with someone who, or groups who are not interested in a black empowerment campaign, specifically talking and using the language I use on this campaign that I'm running for city council. And I made it clear to the Republican newspaper that when Tim Allen, Kittery Walsh, and Michael Flynn, I think that's his name, <clears throat> when they meet with their constituents, they meet with Caucasian people. I said when the Latino community meets, they meet and they speak for what the Latino community can offer. The Asian community, when they meet, they meet with the sole purpose 
<clears throat> on seeing how can their community be an equal part in the economics that is coming through the city of Springfield. I made it clear that my campaign is a campaign that's focused on how the black people here in the city of Springfield get equity, not equality, but how can we get equity in jobs on construction sites and con black contracting? How can we get that ARPA money that went for the outside dining? He, they, they don't talk about that in totality. When Brett, when, when Jonah Snowden asked me that question, I never ever bought up the NAACP. I never ever bought up the Urban League. Jonah Snowden asked me in my campaign, and the article reads, this is what the article says. I'm going to read it again because i got some new viewers. Uh, the Springfield Republican newspaper did an article about the candidates running for city council. They called me. I went before the editorial board. Usually, the editorial board is with the city council person that's running or one that's already elected and is rerunning again. However, in my case, I have four people in the room. Jonah Schultz Snowden, a black man. April May, a black woman. Daniel Jackson, a white man who is the editor and another white reporter. The article reads that Charles Stokes, who said he's collected enough signatures to appear on the ballot for an at-large spot on city council, said in an interview his intention of running was to elevate and support the black community. That's not what I said. I said, I'm running on a black empowerment campaign. I'm running to make sure that the black community is involved in the economic vision that this city has for Springfield. And that if I'm elected to city council, I will do oversight to make sure that Tim Sheehan, who is over the economic planning and development, makes sure that black minority contractors are receiving the same treatment that the Fontaine Brothers, Palmer Concrete, and other contractors are receiving. I also said that I would do oversight to make sure that the monitoring commission that they have in the city of Springfield is doing oversight to make sure that there are a fair amount of African American residents in the city of Springfield working those job sites. Because we don't know that there are monitoring commission that watches the job site to make sure that there's black people, veterans, Asians, and minorities. And that it's supposed to be documented on paper in a computer that these contractors who are receiving multi-million dollar contracts have the right amount of black people, veterans, and everything. And when we look up and down the, the State Street quarter, all of these construction sites that's taking place, black people are not on those job sites. That's what I said. Jonah Snowden, Brett Snowden's nephew, then asked me a question. He said, would I attend to work with organizations in the city, such as the Urban League of Springfield and the NAACP. It says, Stokes took a long pause. When they asked me that question, I took a long pause. I didn't say nothing. I thought about what my response was going to be. And I said, 
before sitting down with Charles Stokes, have any of you in this room heard any black man running for office talk about his sole purpose for running was on economic empowerment for the black community to make sure that we're getting our proper representation on contracting sites and our people are working those jobs. They all said no. My response then was, why would I intend to work with organizations that has not shown any interest in what I'm talking about? And then as the conversation moved on, I said, we as a black community has dropped the ball in our community with making sure that our black residents are properly receiving all that we should get that's rightfully ours. That's what I said. I never ever mentioned the NAACP. I never ever mentioned the Urban League. That was asked to me. Now, anyone that knows me knows I stand on what I say. If I say something, I come on my live, I say what I have to say, and I don't backtrack. I, I'm not wishy-washy. But what I won't tolerate is people putting words in my mouth. If I didn't say it, I won't allow it to be done. And now I want to address another issue. He, I, they say I later said that the Daryl Lee Jenkins Jr. Family of Homicide Resource Center and the African Diaspora Mental Health Organization Association are some of the organizations in the city who are finally getting the courage to say enough is enough. I never said that. That's a negative connotation that saying that I said that those two organizations finally got the courage to say enough is enough. I talked to Gary Porter today of the African National Mental Health Association and I told him what was in the article. He knows me and I know him. Gary and I, Gary quite honestly, knows me a lot better than people would know. When he was a correctional officer in York Street, that's when we first met over 30 years ago. He has been doing this work in our community long before the African Diaspora Mental Health Association was developed. Gary Porter was the one who broke the story of how the probation department was racist and doing racist things in that department. So for the Republican to print that I said that that organization finally got the courage to say enough is enough is a lie. And to bring in the Daryl Lee Jr. Resource Center and say that they are the organization that I will work with because they are saying they finally got the courage to say enough is enough is a lie. Juanita Bachelor, her son was murdered in front of her house nine years ago. Oh, I need a bachelor met Charles Stokes. She was already in this community.